Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at an updated RK84. Royal Kludge reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to take a look at their latest revision of the RK84. And I said, certainly. I did ask them what changes they had added to this new revision. And all I received was a thank you. So I'm not quite sure. Let's see if we can figure it out. But Royal Kludge is trying to move into the more enthusiast space. And they've done good with certain models. But there does seem to be a little bit of a disconnect between what is available in one market and another market. As there are several models that they don't seem to carry. But there are, from what I can gather, there's about three or four different royal kludges. Even though they all fall under the same umbrella, they all have licenses or licensing for different keyboards for different regions. And as of yet, they have not been forthcoming. So I'm kind of just having to guess. But today, we're going to go ahead and dive into the latest revision of the RK84. This is a 75% Pressed. It is a three-mode keyboard, and it this one is preloaded with yellow switches. I'm going to guess they're RK yellow switches, and they have the RGB backlight. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have in the box. All right, so before taking a look at the keyboard, let's check out what accessories we have. We have a nice user manual. This is definitely new. Um, we have the magnetic feet, of which... I keep many spares <laughs> nice and available to me. Although, thankfully, I like the angles that they have naturally. So, I usually stick with those. Uh, but, depends on the typing surface. And, we're going to have selections for turning power on and off. This one also does have the USB uh, 2.0 pass-through ports. But, understand they only work when you're plugged in through usb they will not work over bluetooth or 2.4 uh, battery level reminders we have a pocket for the 2.4 and we have all of the switching mode and keyboard shortcuts which we will go over here shortly also we have some extra oh let's see if these are different looks like we have some rk switches that but were to guess, these are branded RK, but they have a milky, or what I would guess a nylon bottom, with a PC top. Oh, these are actually long pull. I would guess 3.8 millimeter travel. And they are also pre-lubed. There's no ping whatsoever on these. Very nice. I'm always grateful when Manufacturers include extra switches because you never know what could happen. We do have our magnetic feet. Oh, these are actually in a gray color, so I'm going to guess the body is gray. We have your standard wire switch and keycap puller. And we have a USB cable that thankfully has a little tail, so you can go USB C to C if your laptop or computer. Otherwise, only has an available USB-C port. You can go C to C and not have to worry about it. You're not going to lose the dongle, obviously, unless you cut the tail off. But I like this implementation. RK is one of the first to do this. I do believe that uh, Red Dragon does as well. I'm honestly surprised why other brands like Keychron have not adopted this. It's a simple, simple thing. It would add a penny or two to manufacturing costs but it makes the life of the end user much easier. And here we are with the latest revision of the RK84. I want to say this colorway is called either Espresso or Americano. I'm not quite certain. Problem is, is that they don't really give us any revision names. And we got a serial number. If I think the only way that we could really figure that out is if we were to go and open it up, which at some point I will. Um, to see what the version and the date is on the PCB. But otherwise, this is what we've got. Now we do have a uh, G, which is for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver, or B for Bluetooth, and we have an on and off switch. We also have a pocket for the dongle, and thankfully, 
I don't know if it was because of my uh, recommendations or they just decided to do it on their own, but they have now started to add their logo and their name onto the uh, USB receiver. Now, would I like it to be the same color as the keyboard? Yes, but at least they have the logo and it's going to be much easier. It's funny because I actually did find one laying around the other day that had fallen out out of an arcade and I was quickly able to decipher which one it went to. So more companies need to do that. I think it's extremely important. So flipping it over, we have a really nice, um, I like this colorway. Uh, we have the sub legends on the front or the side, depending on how you like, like to call that. And we have your standard 75% compressed layout, which I know some people prefer the expanded. Um, I can work with either uh, because, you know, for the most part, I can find my way around because of the shorter shift. My fingers will be like, okay, these are going to be the arrows. Um, they have it set up in a way that I like it with the delete up at the top corner. And they usually do function delete for insert. So we have a nice colorway. And I mean, I like the gold accents on the legends as well as the gold keys with the mixed with gray. And this is actually a light gray, not a white, almost white, but it is actually a light gray. Now let's take a look to see what we've got hiding under here. All right, so we do have double shot keycaps. These appear to be top only double shot. From the feel, I get that they're PBT, but I'll have to confirm that when I look it up. Now, as far as thickness goes, we have 1.2 millimeter thickness for the keycaps, which is, it's better than they used to be, especially when the Shine 3 keycaps, I believe they were 0.8 millimeters, not even quite a millimeter. We do have better keycaps, and like I said, double shot, top double shot, but at least they're double shot. Um, for the most part, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like PBT more so than I do ABS, but... If they're really thick, I don't mind them for a die sub. I've yet to have any die sub keys actually have the Legends rub off. But if you guys have, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. Now let's see about the stabilizers. These definitely look to be the newer, better stabilizers. I do believe they're made out of palm. And whoa, yeah, those are well attached to the plate. There is no wiggle room whatsoever on here and they are lightly lubricated it isn't a glob of lubrication on there it's just a light dabbing of it and that is nice too much will make them be squishy or mushy yeah they're definitely nice and tight on there all right Let's see what we've got here oh, we have Oh, they're definitely using a different type of grease. Huh, I wonder if they're actually using a 105, 205 or a mix. And these are newer um, stabilizers. You can tell by that pad. So instead of having the feet or the other things where you clip, that basically minimizes the surface that it has to contact. Now, one can still put the uh, little pieces of tape down below and that'll give it just a little bit more muting, but you really don't need to do that unless you're getting too loud of a sound from your keycap stabilizers. Now, it does appear that we have a nice thick foam between the plate and the PCB, and as is on most RK boards, it does not look like we have the ability for screw-in stabilizers. Now, this, I'm sorry, but it's unfortunate. Don't get me wrong. I like where RK is moving towards but using steel plates in 2024 i think that's it's too outdated we don't need steel plates i mean you could use aluminum you could use pc and the prices are so insignificant especially when you're talking about anything more than 10 units the difference in price is literally percentages of a penny for some of these plates so the fact that they're still using steel plates i mean not only does is it steel plate, but I know that it's tray mounted. But even if it was an aluminum plate or a PC plate and it was tray mounted, I would still 
you'd like, all right, well, that's a move in the right direction. At least we're not having to deal with steel plates. Now, granted, we are using already pre-lubricated switches, so we're not going to have that type of resonance. But a steel plate, regardless, is going to be harsher. It's a harder metal, so any typing on it is going to be harsher. Even, like I said, even if it was aluminum, aluminum is what somewhat softer of a metal, actually has a little bit of give, and it's not going to be as harsh, even if it is tray mounted. Also, you're going to have an... Every row is going to sound pretty different because of that tray mounted steel plate, because it's going to the points where it's actually mounted, and that's affecting how the sound travels. All right, so let me go ahead and put these back in place, make sure they're locked. We are, we do have three and five pin uh, hot soft compatible. It looks like these are five pin switches and it is a north facing PCB, which some people still prefer and that's fine. We do have an OEM profile keycap set. And like I said, we do on that back have a USB-C to the PC and then we have pass through. So for some of you guys that, you know, might only have room for one cable on your desk, that's fine. You could add, say, a, you know, if you got to load up a, a flash drive, you could pop it in here. And if you have a wireless mouse, you can put its dongle in here as well. So it this is a, a plus that I love with the RK series. And I think it's starting from the RK68 ups to the 100s. But not all of them have, but when they have it, I like it. Um, I just have to say, I've received so many questions of, my USB isn't working. And try to determine what's going on like my usb pass through ports but they'll be over bluetooth or over um 2.4 and it's like that's not going to transfer the usb signals over this is just a pass through for this port when it's being used um, the usb ports cannot be used when in wireless mode and i i just feel that i have to make that announcement just so that it's clear Now, as far as sound goes, I mean, it doesn't sound horrible. It's, but it, it in no way sounds good for a 2024 keyboard. Because, I mean, even, even disregarding the steel plate, the tray mounting, everything like that, we can see quite clearly here that on the PCB, there's nothing but the PCB. Um, practically, any keyboard that's being sold in 2023, whether it be um, in stock, group buy, um, I mean, almost every other brand. It's it's actually be much easier to name just the ones that don't use it. RK being top. Why they're not using or providing IXPE and or PET is beyond me. So, I mean. <clears throat> This is a GAS 67S, which has both the PET layer as well as the IXP. This is stock. That, that's what a stock keyboard sounds like in 2024. But for the arcade to sound like this, Now, picking it up, I can definitely hear there's different levels of foam or whatever they've put below. So it's actually, that's another place where you're going to have that unevenness. I mean, even, even just putting in some polyfill, some polyfill down below, I think would do better than what they're doing right there. So... This is definitely a keyboard I want to come back to. I've modded quite a few RKs, and I usually have some really good success. I playing with an RK61, uh, one of the first ones I modded with a uh, silicone pour, and I love that keyboard. As far as the 60% goes for a plastic keyboard, it, and it's steel, but I've done a number of mods to it, including... Um, instead of IXPE, because I haven't been able to find where to buy just IXPE. So I use PE foam and PET plastic. 
And it sounds a lot closer to that GMK, and it's, it's actually fun to type on. Yes, there's a little bit more harshness to it, but the uh, sound is, it sounds a lot more livelier, not as flat and as listless as this does sound. It'd be one thing if RK was asking, you know, $30, $35 for this keyboard as MSRP. Well, then that's fine. Other little bit of money that I, or that, you know, good amount of money that I'm saving, I could put towards my time and materials to go ahead and mod this and make this sound much better because it has features that I like, like the pass through ports, like the magnetic feet. I know some people are like, uh, but I mean, usually my keyboard is fine in one position, but if I have to take it with me on the road, I can throw the feet in and I can get a different position. It, you know, if I don't have the right position or the angle of the desk or what have you, but so it allows me to have different typing angles without having to need plastic flip out feet, which does create cavities and can change the sound of the keyboard minimally, mind you, but it does make a difference. Now let's go ahead and plug it in and see what the RGB looks like. All right, so it comes on almost instantly and most keyboards nowadays just have this rainbow pattern as their default because we do have um, milky bottom housing and clear top housing, most of that light is gonna shine through. But say if this was a PC plate, this entire plate would be acting almost like a diffuser and we'd actually have a lot more light come through than we do this way. Um, now, some people don't want the lights. You can always turn them off. But one thing that I do like about this keycap set that I think a lot of people, you know, if they're going to keep, they're going to like because they have the B the Bluetooth um, 1, 2, and 3 positions right here. They have what would be the Mac uh, keys for the function row up here. They have what is Windows, what is the Windows switch and what is the Mac switch. They have the Windows lock. So there's a number of side or front um, sub-legends that are going to help one to remember. And then we got the speed as well as the brightness of the LEDs. And this looks like that might be to turn it off. Yep. So that turns up, uh, changes the mode or the color. So yeah, we have those um, those controls right there, easy to read and available. Here we can mute, here we can turn up the volume. So that is a nice addition. But to be quite honest, I mean, perhaps they've uh, updated the phone. I think the keycaps may, may have been updated. The legends are, are quite nice. Um, they're definitely clear. Like I said, they're top double shot. Um, but I'd have to pull out others to remember how they are made as well. But I'm having a hard time trying to see where there's any more differences to that. I mean, like I said, if RK really wants to move some boards, especially at the prices that they're asking for, I would suggest that they change their plate material, pr preferably just change their mounting style altogether. I mean, come on, guys, it's 2024. Even a faux gasket mount, you know, sandwich gasket mount, would be so much better. A PC plate, an aluminum plate, an FR fork plate. Um, hell, I'd be happy with a PLA or an ABS plate at this point, but anything other than steel. It just, it, steel is, should not be used in what you want to. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, RK has been a starter board for a lot of people but they're not necessarily gaming keyboards they more focus on the enthusiast but they continue to ignore enthusiast defaults by now i mean 2023 is when you know they started using ixpe on almost every keyboard and i remember even in 2022 there was a few that had it but now i mean in 2023 is when they introduced the pet layers which makes an extreme difference, especially if you do a PET layer 
above the uh, or below the, the um, PE or IX PE on the PCB and then another PET layer just below. I'm just surprised at how much difference that makes on any almost any keyboard, whether it's plastic or aluminum. And I still have a um, I'm working on a video. I have uh, three different keyboards, and I'm going to be trying three different types of PET. Well, one's a PET plastic, the other two are different types of uh, polyethylene plastic. But so that you guys can see, I'm going to use the same same keycaps, same switches and same mods across all three and really the only mod is the tempest tape mod and then use them with the different types of plastic so you guys can see the difference because i think some i think one particular plastic is going to work much better on plastic keyboards whereas the pet is going to work much better in aluminum keyboards but there's always construction and you know how the keyboard is made how much space there is that's going to affect those things as well but i'll do my best to try to make up for those differences and Kind of just do a comparison so that you guys can decide you know if you want to do the mods which don't get me wrong i i'm sitting here you know saying you know rk should you know improve with what they include on it but i do enjoy modding them problem is at the price they sell them at there are much better choices available and if they want to sell them at this price then they need to come up and be comparable to the other keyboards they cannot be asking 70 60 70 dollars for a keyboard that yes it has passed through ports okay they're one of the few that do but they can't even compare to gasket mounted keyboards that actually have the ixpe you know a pc plate the pet plastic um, you know gasket mounting with a much softer type of feel i mean they've got new switches they've done that good first step but you can't just say okay well we've added new switches so this is a whole new revision no it's not you're still using a tree mounted steel plate and i mean like i said 30 35 dollars all right i can get it but you guys are charging the prices that other manufacturers are charging but they include so much more heck i know some keyboards that are loaded like this that are at the same price range but they're aluminum and gasket mounted and pc plate and have the availability for other plates and some of them even have different different layouts so i mean like i can't use a cap sock on here i mean that would be huge if you could at least if you could go from ANSI to iso so that you could have that extra key the upside down l enter as well as a split shift i mean that would your, your keyboards would sell so much more and it wouldn't really be that difficult to do you're just adding a couple of more hot swap sockets on the board um and you can still have the leds and everything else and especially if you're using a different plate material it's going to be easy now also a lot of these other keyboards in the same price range do have the ability for screw-in stabilizers some people just prefer screw-in stabilizers as they're going to be more stable because they're attached directly to the pcb and they don't have to worry about the plex the the plate especially if it's you know what you might call flexi and have it, you know, not necessarily warp, but sometimes just not actuate as smoothly as it can if it's on the PCB. So, RK, I really hope that you guys are listening because these things will help you guys not only to make customers happy, but to sell more units because people are going to be happier with their own product. So, it looks like we do have a sleep mode. I'm if I'm plugged in, I am not the biggest fan of sleep mode, but I'm going to have to take a look at the software to see if this is something that we can control in that. I, I know they have updated the software last time I looked at it, but it's been a minute. And there's all also for not every keyboard, but a lot of keyboards, there's, a, there's, a, there's an open source project on GitHub called Rangoli, which is spelled r-a-n-g-o-l-i and it does cover a lot of the royal clutch keyboards not all but um, if you have a keyboard that doesn't get detected by it you can um, send him the user the, the hardware id vendor id and hardware id of the device and and a link to the software and he will usually add it 
within a short amount of time and it is available on Mac, Windows, as well as Linux because it's an open source project that uses code that works across all three. So that's something to think about there. But it's it says something when a third party independent developer has to actually you know, provide software um, for other operating systems because a lot of people, this is a mistake a lot of people will make. They think just because a keyboard does work in Mac you know, that it has a Mac mode and it's going to have Mac software to configure it. And there's very few companies. There's literally three or four companies that I know of that actually have uh, Mac software and they don't do it for all their keyboards, just their most popular. So now I do know RK has now released some VIA keyboards. They're not QMK, they're that fake VIA, but that's at least one step in the right direction. But Keyboard manufacturers need to understand that VIA is ba based on QMK and you can't say QMK VIA and only have a fake VIA on there with no QMK source. But because they, they do, I've seen some listings for this, for their RK61 and the RKR65. Those are the two ones that I know that have QMK VIA now and they actually can be some older ones can be flashed the ones that have the button the reset button underneath the space bar which i don't believe this one will nope this one does not appear to have that or does it nope it has a hole for a reset button but no reset button so uh but i haven't seen the rk84 listed as one of them just the specs today we're taking a look at the royal clutch RK84, a three mode, 75% mechanical keyboard in the Macchiato white colorway. This keyboard is a tray mounted steel plate that includes plate mounted stabilizers and two USB pass through ports that can be used when plugged into the USB. It is preloaded with yellow, milky bottom, and clear top pre lubricated RK switches. It is loaded with a 3750 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 818 grams. It does have two magnetic feet that will raise the back height for different typing angles. It also comes preloaded with top double shot. The chin of this keyboard sits at 19 millimeters off the typing surface while the back sits at 32 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 8 degrees. Using the included magnetic feet will raise them back up to 40 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 12 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $69.99, but currently has a 20% off coupon on the RKGamingStore.com. Links in the video description. Well, I just took a look at the software real quick. Nothing seems to have been updated. Um, even the manual doesn't show where certain keys are. Like I was like, where is the insert key? But because the sub legend is so light, I don't know if you can even, this will even come across on camera. That's where insert is. It's under print screen. And while you can remap buttons, you cannot do anything with functions. You can have different um, what do they call profiles, which is just basically different mappings for the top layer, but there is no bottom layer. I mean, you can remap the top key, but there is no mapping function plus, you know, I want function plus F to run a macro. I want function plus F to up the volume. I mean, you're stuck with the function layer, if you want to call it that, below. Um, which in today's day and age is just i hate to say it but it's unacceptable because the majority of even custom closed source software does have the ability for you even if it's just one layer it at least has the ability to map the underlying key so you can do function combination key and still maintain the top layer or the standard layer naturally so i'm honestly that's just I, I can't believe that that hasn't been corrected and i did i took a look under rain goalie which it does recognize which is the open source rk uh, software and it also doesn't give that ability because there is no ability to do it from within the firmware 
that the arcade boards use. So that is just... Now, I do know Royal Kludge has a couple of uh, VIA keyboards now. I have a couple of them on the way, so I'll be testing those out to see. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be actual true VIA. It's going to be more of the closed source VIA. Um, but just one more thing that this keyboard has that um, I'd kind of forgotten. So it does have a removable shroud in case you do want to go with that floating look. And it gives you that entire gray body. But you still got the steel white plate that comes through. And the logo, it can be removed with some non-acetone um, nail polish remover. Please do not use acetone based because it will eat away at the plastic and it will ruin the shroud. So, well, don't get me wrong, this keyboard can sound okay uh, once it's modded. The lack of functionality, I mean, yes, there are some people that'll be fine to be able to use this. I mean, I myself will be hitting function delete because that is where I am used to the insert key being when there is no dedicated insert key. But function delete just does delete. Now I can change this in the software to insert, but then there is no delete key. So it's, it's just disappointing that in this day and age, we have to, you know, deal with this. I don't know why RK is so behind the curve when it comes to this, as this is something that should be available as it's available in the majority of keyboards that are out there. And RK has been in this game for quite some time. And it's just disappointing to see that they still do not offer that basic functionality of having at least a, a regular momentary layer or even a tap layer, but a layer beyond just the top layer, which they do not. So it's it's hard for me to um, to recommend this keyboard. Um, it's hard for me to recommend this keyboard, especially the price that it sells for, the lack of features, and the fact that it is steel plate, tray mounted, um, does not sound, I mean, the switches are much better. I guarantee that I could take these switches and put them in another keyboard and they're going to sound much better than they do in here because of that steel plate. I, um, I, 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 I just can't say I'm at all impressed. And I mean, at, especially at the price, yes, it's listed at $69.99 and it has a 20% off coupon. So you're basically getting it $14 off. Um, which, all right, but that's still, there's still many keyboards that can be purchased that have more features and better construction than this for that price or less. So I'm, I'm really trying to understand if Royal Kludge intends to move into the future and catch up to features and construction methods that are being used on other keyboards at this price level and below, or they just intend to keep putting out these really limited functionality and, you know, using construction that, that is now, I mean, tray mounted steel plates have been in use for a long time, but we have now had gasket mounting for, I mean, since what, 2018, 2019, even be before that. Uh, yes, there were custom keyboards, but they have become mainstream as of 2021, 2022. They've really, there's a lot of keyboards now that you can buy that are in stock that have gasket mounted. They ne may not be the best gasket mounting as far as flexibility, but at least they do provide for a lot more uniformity of sound across the roads. Because this, some of the rows almost sound like they're coming from a different keyboard. So I'm, I hope that RK is watching this video and that they're taking notes as other companies that I've worked with in the past do. And, and I mean, it's not like they can't get better plates. I mean, even like I said, even if it's aluminum, um, it's not like they can't add gasket mounting, even if it's a sandwich mount or heck do a top mount, do something different do something that's going to allow for more uniformity and for a better stock sound experience and feel because this is harsh 
There's no give. It is a very harsh typing experience. And honestly, I mean, I can use a lot of tray mounted keyboards, but this one, just using this even just for a little while has already kind of aggravated my, my RS. So I just, I don't know what Royal Kludge is thinking. And I honestly, I cannot recommend this keyboard. Um, hopefully they will update this. Uh, I am positive that they could at least put out a firmware that will allow for just one layer. Now that, if they did that, then yes, I could say, okay, this is a little bit more, more recommendable, but it would have to be at a lower price range, more in the $35 to $40 price range, because at $70 MSRP, when I can go out and there's a number of aluminum keyboards from Wormier, from Yunzi, from many companies, aluminum based, they may not be 75%, but 65%, 70% that I can get for this price or less that have remappable keys, have at least one layer, are gasket mounted, come with PC plate, come with IXPE, come with PET, come with so many other features, and they're just better keyboards overall. Some of them even buy a Truvian. So what does Royal Kludge offer? At this price point, they're offering the past. They're selling the past. They're selling a product that is two to three years out of date and priced two to three years, even four years out of date. So I, I hate to be like this because I do, for the most part, like, like RK. I mean, I've bought a lot of RK61 boards for cheap, like on sale for $19.99 or $24.99. To me, that's that's a decent price because with a little bit of modification, they don't sound that bad. They're, you know, nice little 60% keyboards that can be used but it's, there's no longer a good starting point. Whereas a few years ago, I would be like, yes, RK is a great starting board. And now they do have some other boards that are gasket mounted, but they have such a difference in how their markets are, like the RKR65. It's not listed anywhere on the RK gaming store, but it is on Amazon. So is it a separate Royal Kludge? And I mean, it appears so. It appears that, that there's numerous Royal Clutches. So, and there's some keyboards that are available from one that aren't available from other and vice versa. But this, um, the RK84, the only thing new that I can see about this is that it has a new switch. But as you guys will hear in the stock sound test I'm going to leave you guys with, it does not sound good out of the box and will require a lot of modding. I may come back to this and mod it, but... Honestly, I've got so many better keyboards that are going to be worth it because the functionality is going to be there. Like I said, even for myself, I'm going to keep be doing this. I use insert a lot because I am in the command line and insert for a lot of the applications I use in a terminal based environment in Linux. I need the insert key um, it, for various different methods. But I shouldn't have to remember if I do want to change these keycaps out because I, I just don't know what to say. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test. If you guys agree, disagree, if you guys have any comments or suggestions, or if you'd like me to come back to this keyboard because you'd like me to do X, Y, or Z, um, please let me know down in the comment section. I do my best to answer every comment as quickly as possible. I like to get conversations started. So enjoy the stock sound test or, well, I, I, I'd say try to enjoy it, but it's just, it's not going to be anything that's going to make anyone's ears sing with happiness. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.